All right, what's up guys? I'm here with Raphael from The Wealthy Expat. I run a channel called The Wealthy Expat. If you wanna learn countries that you can invest in potentially, countries where you want, might want to immigrate to, not just for women, but also just have a better quality of life. I wanted to ask you about uh, the differences between dating Slavic girls, particularly Ukrainians and Polish girls. I'd say Ukraine, the level of attractiveness is gonna be very high. The level of uh, danger is gonna be very high too. Not yeah. just danger from bombs or something, more about danger from losing half of your wealth or having a lot of stress in your life. Obviously you can't say like, oh, this entire country has terrible people. In my experience, Polish women, if you are deciding on Eastern Europe, because the way that I found your videos, I was just Googling like what place to go to check out in Eastern Europe. And I've been to Poland many times and I lived in Ukraine and I've dated Polish and Ukrainian girls. Yeah. And I started watching your videos and I'm like, maybe I should give Poland a shot. Before it was just some Eastern European place. Now it's a proper EU country. And I came back and I absolutely love it. Yeah. Krakow is, is amazing, it's beautiful. In terms of dating, Ukrainians are gonna be more money oriented. They're going yes. to be less relationship oriented in my experience. The divorce rate in Ukraine is very high. Mm -hmm. A lot of women grow up without their fathers. Whereas in Poland, people grow up in proper families. So the, the Polish women that I've dated, they all had a strong fa father figure. Their parents were married for like 30 years. So yes. they have a good example. They're also in the EU, they're Western, they have a good passport. Also, they, they don't feel like they're a refugee, they can travel anywhere, they can live anywhere they yes, want. Yeah. They don't really need anything from you, to yes. be honest. Okay, so that's, a, I think, the biggest difference between Ukraine and Poland. In Ukraine, the wealth gap is way larger. In Poland, most of the people are middle class. And I've noticed, and that's why Poland's a lot more developed in this sense, because women generally from Western countries, because they don't have that financial need, they don't really look for that in a man. Whereas in Ukraine, especially with the war and everything that's going on right now, uh, they definitely look f more for that in a man. There's a lot of guys saying like, oh, just go to Lviv or Kiev, it's, it's safe, you're gonna date Ukrainian girls, but I would advise against that because if you go there, there is always a premise behind the, the relationship mm -hmm. that you're going to get her out of there and you're going to give her a better life. Yes. That is what the relationship is based on. It's not that you're an amazing person, which maybe you are, but there's always that sense of, he's gonna get me out of here, he's gonna get me to a better country. Right. And the thing that I've heard about Ukrainians is that they're master extractors. <laughs> they know how to uh, put on the charm and use their sex appeal to get what they want. I don't know where that comes from. I don't know, it's baked into the culture. A lot of Polish people have said this about, that they don't have the best experience with Ukrainians. A comment that I've gotten is that they see Ukrainians as like two-faced almost. I don't know if you could agree with that. It sounds I think really it's hard a Soviet say. thing. I think mm -hmm. every, because I've also dated a lot of Russians, and that's my type, uh, Eastern European, what yeah. can I do? They also have that mentality where I think it's a Soviet thing of uh, mm. suffering. You know, they, most of the girls that you're gonna date probably were not born in the Soviet Union, but their parents were definitely born in the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. And there's always this sense of, Things will never be fine. Things will never be okay. We can never be happy. We always need to struggle. Mm. And they kind of bake that into their children. And most girls that you're gonna meet, in my experience, are not going to have a strong father figure. Most of them, their dad is not gonna be in their life. Their dad's not gonna be married to their mom. Their dad has gone to war or something has happened with their mm. dad. And obviously that creates a lot of trauma. Uh. Whereas with Polish girls or Czech girls or Hungarian girls, there's usually a pretty strong family. They have suffered, but a long time ago. Yeah. Obviously, Polish people suffered a lot, but that was Generations many, ago. many decades ago. I know a lot of people that are married to Russian girls and or, or Ukrainian girls, and they like it. I know many happy couples that are from these regions. In my experience, obviously, I'm, I'm pretty wealthy, so I've attracted women that like wealthy men, but unfortunately, they always think, I'm gonna have a good life with this guy. Whether I'm 100% on board with his personality or not, doesn't really matter. It's just, he's gonna get me a good life. He's gonna get my kids a good life done. It's, it's a very mm. provider role. Whereas with Polish girls, they don't really care. Their parents have a home that they can pass on to them. They're taken care of by the government. They're not really afraid like, oh, this guy's gonna give me children. He's not gonna take care of them. Obviously, they, they think about that too, it's just natural being a woman, mm. but they don't think, oh, I'm gonna get a big house from him, I'm gonna get yeah. a lot of money from him, whereas Soviet women, they tend to have that mindset. So you think it's because of the Soviet roots, or you think it's also the culture that kind of promotes that? It's difficult to be a Russian or a no normal mm. Ukrainian. Like, a lot of people say, oh, Russia's collapsing, the economy's going down. It's actually not, it's actually improving. The GDP has been growing. Most people are suffering. 
Most people are not rich. Most people are not even middle class. They, they suffer. They live outside of the cities. Right. Their dad works at some you know, pretty bad job. And they're always looking to improve in their life. And that's why you see so many Russians in Dubai. Mm. It's not because they love Dubai, although a lot of them do. And it's a place that allows them to go without a visa. But they have that mindset where, right, if I go to Dubai, I'm going to meet a guy that has money. Mm. So might as well. I Whereas see. a lot of Polish girls have actually told them like, oh, I used to live in Dubai. And they're like, oh, I would never go to Dubai. It's two different worlds. And it's crazy because they're right next to each other. And I think <laughs> they often get lumped together because they're both Slavics. Uh, do you have any experience with uh, girls from Belarus? Uh, no, I've dated some of them, but I think they have, uh, it's like dating a Russian with a bit more Western mentality. Mm. So a lot of Belarusians, they study in Poland, they study in Germany. They, mm. they usually want to cross over, mm. at least in my experience, to Europe. Yeah, mm. yeah. they're beautiful though. Just Slavic girls are on a whole other level. So a lot of passport bros, you know, they'll usually talk about the Philippines, Thailand. They'll talk about Latin America. And Eastern European girls, I think, have gotten a lot of hype the last few years. But I feel like a lot of it is misguided because the women here are not easy at all, right? I don't know what your experience has been like. Maybe it's different for Russians and Ukrainians, but in my opinion, just kind of looking around, it doesn't seem like they're really into hookups as much as some of the other countries. What do you think? Yeah, I would say if you're looking for a better woman because you're living in the US and you're thinking, oh, the US sucks, women there suck, they're feminists, let me go somewhere else. Yeah. I would advise a lot of caution because that's the way that I thought and that's how I ended up with my ex-wife who mm. almost took all my money and even took my freedom basically I almost went to jail for her a lot of men from these countries from America or the UK they go to a place like Ukraine or a place like anywhere poor Eastern like Moldova or something and they think okay I'm American therefore I'm better than them therefore mm. I can offer something therefore they should like me yeah. and when you go at it with this mindset you're going to attract girls that Oh, they just want a richer guy. They just want a guy with a better passport. Not all the girls are like that, but you are attracting these kinds of girls. They go on Tinder and they put that they're rich or that they have a lot of money or they put mm. pictures on a yacht. Like, no, Yes. it's easy. You're gonna get a lot of girls. You're gonna get a lot of very pretty girls, but you're, you can't build a good relationship with right. them. Right, and they're gonna try to finesse you. I think something that people underestimate when they travel to other countries is the cultural differences. Growing up in America, it's very unique because we're surrounded by people of other races, but after a couple of generations, we're all technically American. So I think a lot of us think that's how the rest of the world works. That is incorrect. If you go to Asia, sure, you know, a Filipino from the Philippines or a Filipino from America might look the same, but the values are completely different. I think the Philippines is a, an exception because there's a lot of overlap with American culture. But if you go to Thailand or Vietnam or a lot of Latin American countries or Eastern Europe, it's a completely different culture. And you were telling me that a lot of, Amer of Americans just don't understand Ukrainian or Russian culture. So they come in to get wrecked. You're coming from a higher trust society. Mm -hmm. So America, I would say, is not high trust anymore because nobody likes their neighbors. But it's higher, higher trust than Eastern Europe outside of you for sure. Mm. So they come to Ukraine and they think, oh, I'm gonna take a girl out for expensive drinks and yeah, she might like me for my money, but it's okay, you know, she's just a regular girl. You start sharing a lot of things with her. You start like bringing her into your life. That's when it starts to get dangerous because then she starts to know like, okay, this guy has money. This is how I can take his money. These women, they typically want marriage as soon as possible. I don't know if you meet a Ukrainian somewhere else, but if you go to Ukraine right. to meet a Ukrainian, they will want to get married in three to six months. And I've met, for example, friends that they got married within a month. And I think like in a month, that's insane. But yeah. in Ukraine, it's actually normal. Like yes. women are encouraged to do that. And the guy is like, yeah, sure, let's get married. F it, no prenup, nothing. And now you're inviting this girl that can potentially wreck your whole life without understanding her culture. That's the big Without one. understanding where her family came from without understanding how bad the situation is in her country, because we think, oh sure, Ukraine has a you know horrible current situation, but it's been happening for a long time and these women kind of have in their head, they need to get out of there. They need to find a guy to provide a better life. I would advise a lot of caution, to be honest. I, I encourage people to go and meet women in different countries, but specifically in Eastern Europe or countries like Colombia, like you, you had a horrible experience in Colombia. Right. A lot of men get wrecked in Thailand. I saw a news where a guy who was partially disabled, Thai girlfriend, she went into his bank account, somehow got mm. access to it, took $30,000 and just disappeared. Yeah. So you might lose maybe 30,000 and not that much. Maybe it's a ton of money, maybe it's all your savings. You have to be very careful with these cultures. I wanna ask you a little bit about your whole marriage and the divorce and everything. So for context, you got married to a Ukrainian girl. You were 22, she was 24, Yeah. right? 
I think that the, they do push marriage, but three to six months seems a little quick to me. And it kind of makes sense if there are two Ukrainian people because they already understand the culture, everything's all, all good. But I think if she's asking you for that, and you're a foreigner, that's a huge red flag. I was in Poland at the time and one of my friends told me like, oh, if you like Polish girls, you should cross the border over to Ukraine. That never crossed my mind. I was not going to Ukraine. I thought, you know, Ukraine, Russia, never, never, never. And he kind of convinced me. He's like, oh, just check it out for like three days. I went there and then I met my ex-wife like the first day. Nice. And I thought like, wow, these women are amazing. I've never seen something like this anywhere in the world. This is right. just the next level. And then what you might, the problem also why you might go into a bad situation is because you're kind of used to a certain quality of women and then you go to Ukraine and that quality just Boom. bam. Yeah, it's the same in Colombia. Right? Without changing anything about yourself, you just get more attractive girls. And then you think, oh, okay, this is the kind of girl that I should get. She was pressuring me to get married after two to three weeks, like literally two weeks or a month after we met, she was like, oh, we need to get married. So I like kind of proposed to her after a month and then after six months, we got officially married in Ukraine, mm. which was insanely fast. Everything went downhill from there. So usually what happens when you get married really fast, the marriage stops and then the day later, everything starts to go downhill. Mm. Now, looking back at that situation, how do you think she fooled you? And what are the big mistakes that you made? I wouldn't even say like she fooled me because I don't think that was her strategy. It was more about, I was just a dumbass. Like I went to Ukraine, not understanding the culture. I met a nice girl. I thought, yeah, let's get married, whatever, doesn't matter. I made no effort to understand where they came from. Yeah. I made no effort to understand Soviet culture at all. I was just like, she's hot. She's better than any other girl that I would get anywhere in the world mm. at that time. I'm going for this, whatever. Mm. No double thinking, no double checking, nothing. Yeah. And a lot of guys do that. They, they get married because they, they get this girl that is incredible. Yes. And Ukrainian girls are very feminine. The same with Russians. They're extremely feminine. They, they take care of you. Yeah. It's a different level of girl. It's just a completely different girl. Yes. And you're like, yeah, that, that, that's it. That's what I want in my life. Slowly you start to not protect your money, trust them too much. You start to just do things because of love, I would say, or because it's, you know, you're married now, so yeah. might as well give her everything. Yeah. And then you get wrecked completely. So right. I, I was sued for divorce for a lot of money. And then I was sued criminally for a company that we had together because I basically opened the company in Dubai and I put her in my company to get her a visa and we just shared the company together and then she used that against me to kind of sue me mm. for the earnings of the company. And you know, it's my company, it's in my name, everything. It was all my fault because again, I didn't make an effort to understand a culture. I, go. I got married way too fast. I was a passport bro that found a really hot girl and wrecked my whole life. A lot of Americans, we experienced that because I don't know if it's because the bar in, for American girls is just so low, yeah. you know, when we see that, and we just see all these beautiful women everywhere. We think we can have the, the pick of the litter, but it's so not true. And I think even now, Americans are kind of get a bad rep for being suckers. The bad girls purposely target us for that. Going at it with the wrong mindset and trying to meet just a hotter girl can get you into serious physical danger also. So not just mm. money, because what we're seeing in Colombia is a lot of guys, they go to Colombia, they match on Tinder with like this insane girl that they've never had in their life. And they right. think like, okay, I found I'm my guy. place. Yes. And sometimes these girls, you know, they, they get a reputation. So Ukrainians have a reputation of being very attractive. People go there, they understand the reputation. They're not stupid. Oh. No, they're extremely intelligent. They're very educated as well. They graduate high school at 16, yeah. right? They and all speak three or more languages, like Ukrainian, Russian, English maybe Polish, maybe a fourth language, it's a different level, man. And they use that and they understand, for example, Colombian women, that they can just use a little drug, drug the guy, and then he can send her his life savings. Ukrainian girls understand, oh, I can use the law in my country against him to there like get money. Oh, maybe he buys me an apartment in my name or something, or just, I think Colombians are a little bit more dangerous. Yes. Because it's, it's actual physical danger, like a Ukrainian, probably will not drug you. It, it's maybe if you go to a strip club, you might get drugged, but a Ukrainian girl in a relationship will probably not drug and kidnap you. Whereas in Colombia, that's, that's a lot more common. common. Be careful. You can lose half of all your money. You can get into horrible situations by just going to a different place, getting a much higher quality girl and then thinking, oh, I'm the man without actually changing anything about yourself. You have to really vet the girl. You have to really right. uh, analyze and see if she's compatible because for example, dating a Ukrainian, you might think like, wow, she's amazing. I want to be with her. 
but you have nothing in common. She's just yeah. super hot. Well, something that's nice in this part of the world is that age gap relationships with the men being much older is a lot more accepted. In a lot of countries in the West, yeah, people still kind of frown upon it, but yeah, like here is completely normal, 10 year age gap. The girl I'm dating right now, she's 20, I'm 29. And it's actually not that big of a deal because Europeans are built differently first off. And a 20 year old from Poland or Ukraine is not on the same level as like an American 20 year old. But something that I also thought was funny that you married an older woman. She was two years older than me. Also, yeah, yeah. My, don't my, do that. Yeah, yeah, my ex was seven years older than me. I'm never doing oh, wow. that again. So something I'm very interested in by your situation is because you're Latin, right? I'm East Asian, born in, we're both born in America, but I think East Asia and Slavic countries have a lot in common. So that's why for me, dating Polish girls have been a quite a good fit. And I'm sure you've seen everywhere here, there's Asian guy, Polish girl. A lot of Asians. Everywhere, everywhere, right? So for you, do you think that Latin culture and Slavic cultures have a lot of similarities or is it like a big culture shock for you? That's an interesting question. I don't particularly like Latin girls. I tried Mexican, Argentinian, it's not, uh, it's not my thing. Mm. Maybe I, I, I haven't tried Colombian for obvious reasons. I, I avoided Colombia at all times because right. I didn't want to end up kidnapped somewhere. They don't match that well. So if you're a Latin American or if you're a Spaniard and you're trying to go to Eastern Europe, it's not a perfect match. You just have to understand Soviet culture. You have to maybe date a girl have her take you to her family and kind of understand the family history, understand the struggles right. they've been through. Because these people have been through a lot. I mean, non-EU Eastern Europe, it's been you know constant bombings, constant war, constant stress, famine. Right. If you're from Spain or from somewhere, you know, maybe you're Latino, but you're living in the US, you may not have been through that struggle. So more than the cultures matching, because if I were to want like a girl that matched my culture, I would just find a Spanish girl, a Latin girl. It's more about, do, when I fully understand her culture, do I like it? I do. I, I really like Slavic culture in the way that they are so honest. It's, it's a very honest right. culture where right. they don't do small talk. Uh, you get in an elevator, you don't say hi. It, I like that. It, I don't like having to talk to a stranger for no apparent reason in an elevator just because. Mm. So for me, Slavic culture is very direct. It's very straight to the point. I absolutely love it. And in my family, we're actually like that. We don't we don't talk to strangers, we don't, we don't need to. Mm. We're, we're very like serious in, in most aspects of our life, so. That's very surprising actually. Yeah. Puerto Rican, but uh, much more serious type, yeah, mm. I would say. So that's why I like Slavic culture, I like Eastern Europe in general. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I would say the biggest differences are like the way that Latin people socialize, it's gonna be a shock for them coming here because the, how cold Slavic people are. That's how Asian people are too. Like we don't really say, hello to our neighbor, but if you need help, we'll help you. Right. Uh, so that's why coming here, it was easy to adapt because I'm like, oh yeah, it's just how Chinese people are, you know? I wanna add on here, maybe you wanna cut this in a different video, is about feminism. So a lot of mm. Americans and a lot of Western guys, they, they hate feminism because they know, you know, feminism is just terrible women and I don't want that. You have to understand feminism on a European context because for example, if you go to Spain, you might meet a feminist who is extremely attractive, thin, wants a family, wants to give you children, and she calls herself a feminist. And you're like, oh, she's a feminist, I can never be with her. But in reality, like, that's kind of a good type of feminism, I would say, mm. where it's uh, women that have struggled a lot in their life, they just want equality, or they just want opportunities. So this is, the Nordics are very similar to that, where, mm. you know, they're very fem feminist, but not the feminism of the United States. It's in a different It's level. a very different, so for example, in Sweden, you might go out and you might offer to pay for the drink. The girl might actually get insulted by you mm. for wanting to pay. And I would argue in most cases, it's good because she doesn't want your money. Mm. She doesn't want your status. She doesn't want to wreck your life. Every single region of, of Europe is yeah, very different. Yeah. Like, but the, the only downside to that would be the expectation as well as all the house chores, everything at home will also be 50-50. Correct? Depends. Depends on the girl, right? There can be some, you know, a girl from Finland that is uh, extremely, you know, she wants to, to make money. She wants to go out there and you kind of have to clean. She's not going to clean the house. She's not going to do mm -hmm. anything. But I would say half, half. Half of the women are, they want equality. They want to have their own money. They want to, but they still want to have a family. They still want to give you kids. They still want to take care of the house mm -hmm. and so on. So I would say every region of Europe, every region of the world has a different dating culture yes. and a different interpretation of feminism, woke culture. So yeah. when you watch these Passport Bros videos, I make some of them, but don't go to a country thinking, oh, it's just gonna be all amazing. I'm gonna get an attractive girl. She's gonna adapt to my culture and yeah. it's just gonna be, 
it's smooth sailing. Also, don't try to lead with money. That's what I would say. So yeah, yeah, yeah. even if you don't have that much money, you probably have more money than the girl. If you lead with money, if you show that you have money early on, you're just gonna get wrecked. Yeah, right? every single time. And I've even generally found that a lot of passport bros, when they finally get a girl and they wife a girl up, it's generally kind of around the same level. Now, I wouldn't say like the same level of girls that they were pulling in America, but it's not like a very drastic difference. It's not like you're going from sixes in America and then you're getting a 10 somewhere else. It's more like a six in Ukraine is probably like an eight in, in the US. And if you got sixes in the US, you would probably just get like a six Ukrainian. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's the average, right? So yeah. uh, for example, I've been to Moscow many times and in Moscow, there are barely any ugly women. Like you, yeah. uh, you know, you, you go to the US, like somewhere like Washington or in New York, you know, there's a high volume of women, but most are, you wouldn't even talk to at all. Yeah. Versus yeah, you go to Ukraine or uh, Russia or maybe Poland or Sweden and you're just like, wow. Like yeah. every second girl is just insane. You won't get a much, much better girl, but on average, the girl that you're gonna get is, is probably much better than the yeah. girl. Cause you just take away the obesity thing, right? Girls in this part of the world are not obese at all. Like 20% obesity rate is quite low, so. But I would say girls our age though, it's so rare to find, like, even if a girl is on the overweight side, she's thick, closer to thick, but I've never seen a girl that's like American obese, you know? Like that's more of a, maybe Turkey has that issue, US, Mexico, but here I feel like it's quite rare to find a girl who's really obese. True. So if you guys want to follow him, his channel is The Wealthy Expat. He gives a bunch of advice for people looking to get passports in other countries, best places to live if you're looking to invest your money in other places. All right, see you guys, bye.